It's hard to think about Area 51 and not immediately think about Bob Lazar, but the way things went for him made sure that there'd be a whole generation of people who didn't know his story. But he won't let this happen. Bob Lazar is spilling shocking details of his alien encounter at Area 51, and it's a lot crazier than you'd think. Join us as we bring you up to speed about what's been happening right under our noses and the lengths the government went through to keep the truth hidden. During the 1980s, Bob landed a gig working at the Navy's Los Alamos Mesan Physics Facility and the infamous Area 51, or as he and some of the top scientists in the area casually called it, the desert. Initially, he thought he'd be tinkering with government weaponry, but reality hit him when he actually came face to face with what was really going on. The moment he stepped into the facility, it was like he'd entered an alternate universe. UFOs weren't just the stuff of conspiracy theories there. They were part of the office decor. Posters were plastered everywhere, and conversations were buzzing about extraterrestrial phenomena like the weather. For Bob, this was insane. He didn't understand how people were just talking about it like it was no big deal. Then came the moment he says he'll never forget. Bob walked into one of the main labs he was supposed to be working in, and what did he see? An actual UFO hanging in the air like it's the most natural thing in the world. But he couldn't just hang out there to even get a good look at it. He got the memo, keep moving, keep quiet. Easier said than done, right? As much as Bob tried to zip his lips, the things he witnessed were too otherworldly to keep bottled up. It was also the time when the world was going crazy about UFOs and aliens. It was the one theme common in all the movies, the TV shows. It was everywhere, but no one had proof that any of it was real. Yet he stayed quiet, resisting the urge to spill the extraterrestrial beans, at least for the time being. That started to become a lot harder once Bob actually went to work. The project he was working on, focused on dissecting and understanding advanced intelligent aircraft, suggests the study of technology far beyond our current capabilities. The craft under examination seemingly defies conventional physics by manipulating gravity. While gravity is a fundamental force, controlling it would be groundbreaking, offering capabilities beyond conventional propulsion systems. Gravity is a natural force, always present, and not something we've created or manipulated on a large scale. It's a force that's pervasive, but not understood in terms of direct manipulation. The closest we've come to somewhat controlling gravity is by using falling planes to create zero gravity, but that too happens for just a few seconds. So we're nowhere near actually controlling gravity, even today, and this was all happening in the 80s. Manipulating gravity on a global scale is unfeasible due to the extreme mass required. So it's not really a human shortfall, it's just really difficult to do. At the same time, that's what made the craft's capabilities so shocking. The government's keen interest in harnessing this power suggests recognition of its potential for immense control over fundamental forces. Lazar's theories propose that if we could harness and control gravity, it could potentially grant control over vast aspects of the universe, possibly even time itself. Bob's department was the one working to reverse engineer these craft, to figure out what exactly makes them tick and how they do what they do. Reverse engineering such crafts would offer insights into highly sophisticated technology, potentially providing revolutionary advancements in aerospace engineering, propulsion systems, and materials science. Mastery over gravity could revolutionize space travel, propulsion systems, and energy generation. Forget about having to travel to the moon. You could just pop in. Or if you want your own mini-moon, you can also check out the link in our description. Controlling gravity might enable crafts to maneuver in ways currently deem it impossible, allowing for faster-than-light travel or extremely efficient propulsion methods. The government's intensive focus on such technology could be driven by the need for military superiority energy advancements, or even geopolitical advantage, recognizing the potential for groundbreaking technological leaps. We've already seen this in action near black holes. Massive objects, like black holes, exert an immense gravitational pull, which curves space-time intensely. This curvature affects the path that objects, including light, 
follow in the vicinity of the black hole. Intense curvature because of strong gravity near a black hole leads to two main effects related to time, time dilation and gravitational time dilation. In regions with varying gravitational strengths, time behaves differently. Stronger gravitational fields cause time to pass more slowly compared to weaker gravity zones. This is a fundamental concept in Einstein's theory of general relativity. As an object gets closer to a black hole, the gravitational time dilation becomes increasingly significant. Observers from a distance would perceive time passing more quickly for objects near the black hole compared to their own time. For someone observing an object falling into a black hole from a safe distance, they would perceive time for the falling object to appear to slow down. As the object gets closer to the black hole's event horizon, its apparent time progression diminishes, making it seem to take an increasingly longer time to approach the event horizon. This alone proves that gravity profoundly influences the passage of time and how our perception of time can vary depending on the strength of the gravitational field in a given region of space. So it makes sense why the government would want to have access to technology that could help them control this and with that, the entire world. The US would be a superpower and no one would be able to fight back. Bob figured this out and could spill the beans at any point, but why would he? Before working in high-security government facilities, individuals are required to undergo security clearance. This clearance allows the government to monitor conversations, including phone calls, and involves not just the employee but also their family, including their spouse. Initially, Bob gave his consent for security clearance, assuming he had nothing to hide. He likely didn't anticipate the extent to which this clearance would invade his personal and family life. The clearance meant that the government could monitor and analyze conversations between Bob and his wife. This caused significant strain, especially when his wife had an affair. The difficult situation escalated further when everyone except Bob knew what was happening. Him being a loving husband who was being cheated on made him a flight risk. At any point, he could find out and go off the rails, and if that happened anywhere near Area 51, it would be the first thing he'd expose. So measures were taken to distance Bob from the project to safeguard its overall security, but they wouldn't tell him why. Sensing potential trouble at work, Bob decided to share the extraordinary things he was witnessing with a few close friends. He took them to the desert on three occasions to witness test flights of highly advanced, physics-defying craft. He knew it might be his last chance, and they wanted to immortalize this moment in time. Despite the limitations of 1980s camcorder quality, they managed to capture footage showing a craft exhibiting extraordinary speed and control, defying known aviation capabilities. But seeing a sight like this isn't something you can forget about, so they went again and again. Bob and his friends were caught on their third visit and brought in for a debriefing. Surprisingly, Bob wasn't arrested but was reprimanded for exposing classified information to his friends and then fired from his job. This was just the start of his nightmare. When he tried to find another job, he realized that records of his employment, educational background, and even his birth at a hospital seemed to have vanished, rendering him effectively non-existent in official records. He was now a non-person. Facing this unprecedented situation of being essentially erased from official records, Bob took the bold step of contacting the media, George Knapp from the Las Vegas TV station Class. However, he chose to do the interview under the pseudonym Dennis to protect his identity. During the interview, Bob revealed a lot of details about his experiences. He shared specifics about the layout of hangars at the site, focusing on the fact that there were not just one, but nine UFOs under study. Among these crafts was the highly advanced gravity-defying aircraft that defied conventional understanding. At one point, when the story had picked up, Bob decided to use his real name. But even that made matters worse for him. But when anyone would look into Bob, nothing would come up. It was easier to believe that Bob's a liar than to believe the crazy stories that he was telling. He kept telling it, though, thinking that at one point, someone would finally believe him. Years went by, and it became clear that this might not happen. When Bob tried to move away from the world of science and try something else, things got bad again. He encountered various hurdles, 
including becoming entangled in a case involving accusations of aiding and abetting a prostitution ring. These challenges seemed orchestrated to discourage him from further disclosure or talking about his past experiences. But he never stopped. To this day, Bob is speaking his truth and will tell his story to whoever will listen. But do you believe him? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one.